Hello, random stranger. Uh, it's been a while. I do hope you've been going okay. Uh, today is going to be pretty epic because we're finally going to get to go through chapters 29 to 32 of Hoseki no Kuni, um, which I'm told starts going into things that the anime did not. So uh, I'm fairly psyched about that. But before kicking off uh, volume 5, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what happened at the end of the last uh, volume. A couple of things that I didn't get to cover in the last reaction, uh, as well as some thought-provoking comments from you guys, as always, that brought up some things that I hadn't really considered. So let's talk about Bort and Daya for a hot minute. Uh, I remember in the anime that Daya's defeat of the Lunarian with Bort watching on helplessly from the outside was for me one of the highlights of the whole season and being able to relive those moments in manga form was not disappointing at all. I was actually um, I was really impressed with how the illustrations were able to express both the action elements of the story plus the emotional weight of these two diamonds just finally having it all out and letting their emotional masks just drop for a second to reveal their true feelings towards each other. What I really love about the way that Daya fought was the poetry in the fact that they used their own body to do it. So they sliced the big Lunarian um, open with their broken off arm, which one is a super unconventional way of fighting the Lunarians, but it worked. And I thought it really vindicated Daya's whole method of thinking outside the box when it comes to battle tactics. Um, and then to have bought, you know, the, the main critic of that type of thinking um, watching on was like the cherry on top. And two, it was really symbolic in that their triumph was secured using uh, something, a part of themselves that they've always been so down on, i.e. their physical makeup or their cleavage or like their ability to break much more easily compared to, um, say, a diamond like Bort. So for Daya to turn that so-called weakness into the ultimate weapon uh, was pretty amazing. Next, the only head pat that really matters in the entire lore of Hoseki no Kini um, happened with Bort leaning down to touch Daya on the head. And their exchange um, during that moment basically boiled down to, I love you just the way you are. So there was that, um, I guess, meeting of the minds for once, our OTP diamonds aren't like talking past each other, but really seeing each other and how much the other gem matters to them. And of course, the lying on top of that was the whole irony of Daya saying like, um, I see now how much you mean to me while being eyeless. So they'd lost their eyes during the fight it was just, um, I was just like this. <laughs> Alrighty, on to some comments up. Oh, Alrighty, sorry guys, I just woke up and uh, my head's a little bit fuzzy, so my accent might bleed out a little bit more than usual. Sorry. <laughs> um, all right, on to some comments. So, uh, yeah, some of you noticed that uh, Shiro, the human-armed dog Lunarian, um, right before it evaporates into thin air. Uh, and after Sensei looks as though he'd just finished giving it a blessing, um, that it turns for a moment into a small, normal-looking puppy. Um, as to what that might mean, um, Barry McCokino made an interesting comparison to like a ghost finally finding its peace or getting some kind of reconciliation or having a wish fulfilled. Um, they also suggested another possibility that Shiro was a creature that the Lunarians had tortured and made into that monster. Um, but now in, I guess, like the calming presence of Sensei and the other gems, it was finally able to be released. And I actually, um, I actually think that both things could be true at the same time. So my theory is that the small dog that appeared uh, was a glimpse of its original form prior to the Lunarians capturing and mutating it into this new attack dog 
and that since I had known it in its original form, possibly because uh, possibly because he had been its master a long time ago, but somehow was separated from Shiro and it fell into the hands of the Lunarians. And so once reunited with its original master, Shiro was able to find peace. Yeah, I don't uh, really know, but what's really emerging as a glaring weirdness that Foss is definitely picking up on is Sensei's strange closeness to the Lunarians and his relatively strong affection for them. So there was a moment uh, when Foss is, you know, still buried in Shiro's fur out of sight and they overhear Sensei saying, oh, look at you, what happened to your paw? I can imagine in a very sad, um, affectionate tone. And then Foss calls out and suddenly emerges from the fur. And when Sensei like turns around, that look on his face reads, um, to me at least, like, oh shit, I didn't know you were there. And then when Foss presses him, he denies knowing Shiro outright. It's just super sus to me. Um, and... At Danny12 asked a pretty good question around this. Um, do you think Foss already knew all this, i.e. Sensei's connection to the Lunarians, uh, and had just forgotten because of the loss of their arms and legs? Or did Foss just not know? Um, I, yeah, it was a good question. <laughs> I'm leaning towards Foss never knew in the first place. Based on... I guess what pre limb loss Foss was like. So remember they were super into finding their purpose and wanting Sensei to let them fight the Lunarians um, and wanting to really impress him. I just don't think Foss would have been that obsessed with proving um, themselves to him if they suspected as they do now that Sensei had some unspeakable, potentially ominous connection to the Lunarians. And just based on their intensely curious nature or uh, proclivity towards finding out the truth, I don't think Foss would have just dropped it like the other gens are doing um, if they knew. And we also saw uh, the reappearance of Antark, I guess, in Foss's consciousness making the shush sign right before Foss was about to ask Sensei about it. Um, just showing that it's in their nature to press until they get to the bottom of things. And in general, Foss at the beginning was pretty clueless about a lot of things as well, uh, but that is definitely not the case now. So just one last thing from uh, Nerdy3177, um, a really interesting thought. Uh, so Mercury is sometimes called Quicksilver. Perhaps Cinnabar also has one of the treasures. Perhaps they are a bit more human than they seem, uh, but they don't seem to be accumulating treasures. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating that Mercury is also known as Quicksilver or Liquid Silver. And um, I think it's true that they perhaps are a little bit more human in comparison to the other gems in certain respects. So if you cast your minds back to when I did an <laughs> impromptu lecture on the symbolism in Hoseki no Kuni with like the different slidey scales, one of them being um, hardness versus non-hardness, I think the fact that Cinnabar has uh, a very malleable metal compared to all the other gems um, and which is a source of shame for them fits in really well with how also unlike the other gems cinnabar is the most skeptical um i mean aside from foss now um i mean well actually thinking about foss foss now that they have this incredibly malleable liquidy platinum gold alloy has now gone to the side of the skeptics uh which is a very cool carrying on of this hard versus non-hard theme and, you know, completely uh, believing of Sensei versus sort of a little bit skeptical. Someone in uh, one of the anime reactions way back um, had also mentioned something really cool that Cinnabar was commonly used back in the day by alchemists to try and turn base metals into gold, uh, which is one of the treasure tower treasures. And I think there's some more potential symbolism in there that you could read into it, in that 
while Cinnabar isn't going full on Foss style, you know, questing for the truth, symbolically they do have an ingredient, i.e. the liquid mercury or the skepticism to start down that path. All right, it is time to get into volume five, Land of the Lustrous, Hoseki no Kuni by Haruko Ichikawa. Um, I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure the hiatus is still going on. So just the title cover and we've got Pad Paradsha, Pad or Padpa. Oh man, I'm super excited to see them again. Um, I'm going to assume that we get Padpa for more than 10 seconds, <laughs> like in the anime. So yeah, definitely looking forward to more conversations between Padpa and Foss. Because um, they were definitely dropping some bombs of wisdom onto Foss in terms of how to confront or not confront Sensei. And I feel like had they were they able to stay awake for more than 10 seconds at a time they would totally have gone to the dark side or the light side depending on how you look at it um and just helped Foss. there's uh i'm pretty sure that's zircon is that yellow's partner the younger like second youngest to Foss, and dire i'm gonna say and uh a smiling Foss. I mean, that's a good sign, right? Or a bad one, like it's kind of a trap to make us think that this volume is going to be okay. Oh, and I love, so we've got the butterflies, the golden butterflies, interestingly. Um, yeah, so as you know, it's much like the use of shadows so far in uh, Haseki no Kuni, butterflies tend to appear, um, I guess, you know, as a symbol of metamorphosis and the change that is happening mostly to Foss. Right. Haruko Ichikawa. It's raining as well, so I don't know what the rain might mean. I guess a bad days ahead to come. Character introductions. Oh, he's starting with Cinnabar. Again, always uh, with a back turned towards us. So Cinnabar, being clever sometimes makes it impossible to take action. Yeah, so I guess Cinnabar is going through some serious uh, paralysis by analysis, right? When you just have so many things in your head, so many things to think about that you have no idea what to do and you're just, just stuck there. Phosphophyllite. Wait, is Cinnabar stepping on Bort's hair? No. <laughs> um, Phosphophyllite, the hero of our story, has apparently been experiencing trippy hallucinations lately. Seriously damaged. Well, I mean, you can't really blame them, right? They've been through so much and has seen so many of their gem siblings almost or be taken away by Valenarians. Yeah, seriously damaged in, a, in so many ways now that it's just become <laughs> like just another day. Ghost? Oh, yeah, so hang on, let me just double check. So that is Ghost Quartz on the cover, which I believe never appeared in the anime. Okay, Ghost Quartz, Hardness of Seven. A quiet gem who does many inexplicable things. Has a body made of more than one crystal. Okay. Ah, oh, interesting. Um, inexplicable things. What does that mean? So they're a bit of a wild card, it sounds like. Bort. Oh, for once, Bort is not anywhere near Dyer. So Dyer is still, I guess, hopping around Sensei. Um, but Bort is just... Chillin. A battle geek. I feel like that it's said that every single time in one of these <laughs> introductions. Recently discovered to have a taste for correcting others' battle styles. <laughs> so they just only discovered that they liked critiquing others? I feel like they knew that a long time ago. Maybe with Foss it just 
the monster came out even more strongly than with others because Foss is just so sloppy. Um, okay, Zircon. So hardworking and diligent that others occasionally fear for the gem's well-being. Yeah. I guess because, you know, the younger you are, the more you have to prove, which is sort of Foss's situation before they became this um, super-powered gem with all these different materials. So now they're the one, I guess, on the bottom of the gem heap. <sighs> it's sad. Amethyst. Apparently they switch places sometimes, but no one notices. <laughs> Classic twin pranking. Yellow Diamond, eldest of all the gems, sometimes gets bored. Again, that's just what happens when you get older, right? Like it's just you've seen everything, nothing is new under the sun. You just want to just break the cycle. Huh, they don't have, oh no, Padma's there, okay. Uh, I feel, I think Padpa was also around the same age as Yellow, so yeah, that kind of explains their a bit jaded outlooks on life. Diamond. Cuties love cute things. <laughs> I love that they've just reduced Dyer's character to cute. <laughs> That's what they are. But as we know from last volume, they are so much more than that. Um... Alexandrite has a surprising reason for becoming a Lunarian research enthusiast. Yeah, so we learned that Alex is um, one because of the condition that when they turn into um, red Alex, um, this, the moment they set their eyes on Lunarians, I guess that was part of why they wanted to study them. Uh, Neptunite, a realist. <laughs> Whatever realism means. Uh, Rutil apparently used to be quite cocky, not too surprising. Used to be being a key phrase. I think they're pretty, they're pretty cocky right now. So I don't know. Again, maybe age has mellowed them out. Benetuat, cursed with bad luck. Uh, another gem that I hope we get to see more of. Ah, uh, here we go, Padparadsha. Hardness of nine. Yeah, so I feel like, so close to Bort, I guess, finally makes an appearance. Has a unique condition. Congo Sensei. The great and terrible Sensei. Whenever you see the descriptors great and terrible, like, so Ivan the Terrible, right? Uh, one of the Russian M Tsars. It, he was called Ivan the Terrible, but the terrible really means, yeah, he was, um, you know, really intimidating, but also really awesome in power. It's just, yeah, it's interesting when those two words are put together. It just kind of suggests that Sensei has a dark side. Um, extremely sus. <laughs> Surprisingly bad at dodging questions. Yeah, I agree. The last time, I think he kind of just used the excuse of sleeping he just like fell asleep on Shiro and that was that that was the end of the conversation that Foss was gonna have with them okay okay contents oh we get Padpa right up on the bat okay awesome Padpa empty black spot fresh hmm <laughs> chapter 32 angst <laughs> As if nothing that has come before these that chapter was angst at all. You haven't seen angst yet. Okay. So that was a warning. A <laughs> warning sign. Um, distance. Reversal. A pair. A new job. Oh, a new job. That sounds like a very Cinnabar-centric chapter. And then, of course, our fluff piece. Land of the long-standing puzzle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Chapter 29, Padparadsha. There's Foss just being angsty. Ah, uh, yep, so they've got the butterflies just gathering around them. 
as if the butter butterflies can smell like oh this is someone or something that's going through some monumental changes physically and also um, personality wise belief wise as well like like the the sands of their belief are shifting how long has it been this is day 10 so here they are just waiting for the Lunarians so they can ask them a couple of questions You have good ears, Rutil. You're working overtime. Ah, uh, Rutil. I mean, okay. Yeah, okay. So, so Rutil is a bit of a psychopathic scientist, but at the end of the day, they're a good egg, you know, caring about their younger gem siblings. They never come when you're waiting for them, do they? The last one wasn't like the others. Maybe there's been some change on the Lunarians end. Hmm. How's Dia doing? We found the last sliver this morning, so much better. Oh, I only got to do the big bulky one. <laughs> I wanted to fluff fluff the cute fluffy ones. Wow, that's not fair. You know... Oh my god, I love Dyer. The fact that they so badass in um, chopping down the big one and then all they want to do after they wake up, after having been massively destroyed or partially destroyed, is to pat the Lunarian that they just destroyed. <laughs> Red Barrel made a replica of a little version of that thing so that Dyer could see it. F fluffy! Like this. <laughs> Good on your red barrel, it's making Dyer happy, doing the work of God. Hey Lex, look what I have. <laughs> Is Alex sort of like scared that even this replica would turn her turn them into red red Alex? That's so cute. And now they're a fad. Huh, that's nice. Come see me for a checkup when I get back. Retail is just so matter of fact, just relating the crazy events back to Foss and they're not really stopping Foss either from carrying out their crazy plan of waiting for the Lunarians, which is interesting. Are you going somewhere? The shore of nascency. Oh. To find parts for Padparacha. Hmm? Oh, so Foss knew that this is what Rutil does. I haven't forgotten about Padparadsha. That's a relief. Padparadsha is so cool. That gem knows everything. Ah, uh, yes, they were very cool. I mean, the impression that I got from the anime was that they are a total chad. <laughs> and yeah just so done with life just ready to just kick back and chill with a mojito on the beach or something i remember paparasha used to be rutil's partner that is uh, that's heartbreaking just rutil in the middle of the shore of nascency just collecting any bits they'll find and All of those um, different parts, there's like so many there. There's like 20 at least, or 50, whatever. That's painstaking work. There they are, Pad Papa. Still sleeping away. It has a hardness of nine with excellent toughness. Yeah, so I guess um, in the hierarchy of gems, according to hardness, they'd be very close to Bort, um, even above Dyer, because Dyer obviously has a um, very high cleavage. It's very easy to break. So, I mean, my headcanon is that Bort is, no, Padpa is the only one who can <laughs> intimidate Bort in any capacity and just, you know, considers Bort like a little kid. <laughs> I feel like the only one who could probably reduce Bort 
to a blubbering mess. Um, second in strength only to Bort, about the same age as Yellow. And born with a body full of holes. So strong and yet so weak. It's got to be have been really frustrating. It's kind of like the opposite of Dire. Well, they're not weak, but it's like the whole their whole arc was like I'm so weak, but actually I'm really strong. Retiel provided support for the gen through reconstruction. That's how Retiel got to be such a good doctor. But Paparaja hasn't moved in a long time. So, ah, oh, Retiel, I feel so much for them. Oh yeah, Retiel. I think it was around here. Aha, uh -huh. I found it over the winter. And for some reason, I decided to bury it for safekeeping. Ruby, this will help. A mineral in the same family as Paparaccia will increase the odds of resuscitation and should keep the gem moving longer. Every time I work on the puzzle, it gets harder. So the more they fix Padpa, the more it gets harder to revive them? I wonder why. Is there just sort of like a limit on the number of times that Padpa can be resuscitated? Hmm. But yeah. Floss, so good. Such a good baby for, you know, considering Retail and Padpa. Click. Ah, the suspense. Hey. Good morning, Padpa. Yawn. Oh wow, I'm extra glitzy this time. <laughs> God, they're so cool. Even the way that their like collar is popped up. How are you feeling? Is that oh, every teal is like sweating and a bit nervous? Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Good. How long was I out? 231 years, 11 months, and one day. <laughs> I mean, one, the length of time, that's a long time. But two, the fact that Rutil has it down to the day and can immediately recall how long it's been. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen Rutil so whipped before. Wow, I killed my last record. <laughs> this was your 330th. Operation, oh my goodness. Whoa. <sighs> Padpa's like, what are you doing, Rutil? It's all my fault. I'm so incompetent. Eh, it's just my bad luck. No, if my medical skills can't override your bad luck, then they're not worth gravel. Hmm? Wow. This is... I, you know how in every um, gem partner, there's always, there tends to always be one that feels lesser or like they have to prove themselves more than the other one. It's so interesting that Rutil is actually the one who's in that position. Oh, wow. After having seen volumes of them just being so dismissive and <laughs> so cool. Um, and sort of senior in the gem hierarchy. It's really weird to see them now here be like, oh, it's me. I'm so incompetent. Um, yeah, that's character development for you. And part by is so nice. Like they're just, they know. I feel like, okay, so here they kind of looked a bit shocked that Rutil had tried so many times and probably a little bit like, oh, just, just leave it. But yeah, at the same time, they're just so sensitive of Retail's feelings. It's nice. Hmm, a new kid. <laughs> oh, you're the one who was always clinging to Sensei. <laughs> the youngest little squirt. You have a much different vibe now. <laughs> I've been through a lot. <laughs> the fact that Padpa, 
apps that have been gone been gone so long can just immediately tell the change in FOSS. It's just without FOSS even having to open their mouth is quite something. It just goes to show you the intensity and the extent of change. These arms, is that a metal alloy? Just like me, you poor thing. Well, not quite just like you. You've had it rough. Oh, another monumentous head pack. Piparacha, there's something I want to ask you. Rutil, can I go outside? <laughs> Passed out. I mean, they have been operating quite a lot, nonstop. Um, interesting also that Padpa knew to exclude Rutil from this conversation. Hmm. Ah, stretching. I love this time of year. Yeah. You getting, are you getting enough sleep? Not really. You listening to Sensei? <laughs> Not really. You are a bad little gem, aren't you? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I am loving this older, older brother, younger brother kind of vibe that these two have going on. The older one, obviously. They're both troublemakers, I can see, but yeah. Foss is the inexperienced troublemaker. I want to talk to the Lanarians. And I want to find out the truth for myself. Does that make me bad? Ugh, million dollar question. Let's say... Did I see? Nope. I wanted Rutil to give up trying to put me together. I don't want the good doctor to have to work so hard. But I don't know how Rutil would take it. The pure, honest truth might raise the entire landscape and change it in a way you never expected. So keep a cool head and tread carefully. Okay. Oh. <gasps> Oh, uh, that's interesting that Padpa links um, getting to the truth of things to the way that they sort of conceal how they don't really want to be put back together again by Rutil anymore. So I guess the point is um, sometimes, you know, finding out the truth can be super destructive and really ruin things for a lot of people. Not that you shouldn't ever do it, but just the way that you go about it, you need to be really careful. Is this where they're going to pass out? Damn it. Did you get to ask your question? It's so sus how Rutil is just always there at the right time. <laughs> they were literally like asleep on the floor. And that must have been, that was not a long conversation at all. We only got to talk about the weather. I don't know, I still feel like Rutil knows that something more is going on. And given that they would have been very clear on what kind of character Piper would be, I think they sort of knew. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, look at Rutil's. The way that their lab coat is just floating in the air, it's kind of a bit ominous. End of chapter 29. So I guess that's it. That's all we get of Padpa. I mean, okay, so not really that much more detail than what we got in the anime, but at least we got to soak it in um, slowly while it lasted. Chapter 30. Empty black spot. That goes to quartz. Rutil, I heard you got Pad Paracha moving. Oh, it's yellow. Oh, so wholesome. Only for a moment. Oh, I wanted to talk about old times. <laughs> what a couple of decrepit old fogies. <laughs> Honestly, something that they would never say to Padpa. They wouldn't have the guts to say it to Padpa. 
You must be bored. Okay, so Rutila obviously reverted back to the old, like, cranky old doctor. I just left Zirk on a board. Oh, right. The board round robin thing. You must miss your partner, don't you? <laughs> Thank you, Foss, for bringing that up. Me? Don't be silly. Zircon and Bort, I think they make a good couple. The elderly do have clever ways of making their insecurities, or masking their insecurities. <laughs> oh my goodness, Bort. <laughs> Somehow they are more menacing in the manga than in the anime. I guess because we can stare at this shadow-filled mean face for longer. Poor Zircon. It's an honor. I look forward to working with you. God, just say something. Just all well, this unnecessary emotional torture. Bored. Come on. Okay, so the whole day just having to deal with Bort's condescending silence. Thank you for working with me today. But <laughs> They're going to break this kid, honestly. Bort didn't say a single word all day. Slump. Whoa, 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 whoa. What did I do wrong? Yellow was always chatting with me. And then Daya and J2. Oh, that's a cute cloud. So then Reteal. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, if you're going to settle down, just <laughs> Yellow is the one. They're both in the Diamond family, but they're so different. Don't tell me. Bot hates me. Hates me. Hates me. Oh. Zircon. Oh, yellow. No, I can't go crying to yellow over something like this. I have to play it cool. No, do go. Just talk your feelings out, man. Otherwise, brain is just going to break and ball will just move on. Be like, oh, too weak. Next. <laughs> is Zircon okay? That's weird. <laughs> well, I don't want to be overprotective. I love that they're both just thinking about the other, just not wanting to um, be a, a burden for the other gem. That's true love there. Boy, just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> right. You think so? Make up your mind. <laughs> Alex just done. She just wants to get back into the books and just doesn't want to have to deal with all these emotional uh, challenges that the other gens find themselves entangled in. Okay. Ah, Foss, sigh. Another day, another failure. <laughs> you were here? Yes, I was. Please help me. Huh? No, you're scaring me. Please help anyway. <laughs> I kind of, it's kind of funny to think that Zircon was just sitting there, but because of the massive depressive black hole that they were in, that Foss just didn't notice them and didn't see them. Ah, poor Zircon. Bot won't talk to you. But Bot doesn't really talk to anybody. Not a word in seven days. And I feel like it would be rude to speak out of turn. You were Bort's last partner. I guess you were so great at everything that I'm just a disappointment. <laughs> oh, how the tables have turned. No, 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 no. Even though we're closest to the same age, I always thought of you as this immature, infantile crystal. <laughs> And now suddenly you're leaving me in the dust. Yeah, that's going to be hard. I mean, at the the speed at which things just changed must have been a real shock for Zircon. Suddenly all the pressure is on them to perform. What have I been doing with my life? So 
I was thinking maybe I should lose my arms or legs. Oh dear, this kid's gone mental. <laughs> Ironic that Foss is now the one calling someone else the kid. Also, that is terrible because it's not like they went out of their way to lose their limbs and it's not exactly um, a cost-free endeavor, you know? It's never something you should do on purpose. Bot hates wasting effort and is super logical. If that battle freak doesn't like something, you're guaranteed to hear about it. So you have nothing to worry about. Have more faith in yourself. Oh, I love this empathetic side of Foss. Um, I'm glad that Foss kind of takes after Yellow and Dia in that respect. Thank you very much. Faith in yourself is the only thing I know you've always had in spades. Yeah, I don't like your tone. <laughs> Zircon just no, not much tact when they speak. I did have a feeling that this would happen someday. What? I don't believe it. How? I remember when I could count on my groundless optimism to pull me through. It seems so strange now. Oh, that's, they're kind of grabbing, I guess, because they're leg now. And it's interesting because um, they used to not powder up the agate legs. You know how it was like with the stripey things? But yeah, because of not wanting to stand out more than they have to, they now cover it up with the white powder. I envy my old self. So now they're just a lot more aware of their position and um, unlike their old self who just really didn't give a crap about how others saw them, or at least in a way, like they were just so boisterous and out there and had total belief that they could achieve what they set out to achieve. Groundless optimism. Groundless bit sad to see how jaded they are now. <sighs> but still being silent. Envying an older self. I wonder what Bort's older self was, unless they were like that the whole time. Who counted on something to pull you through. Oh. Why is there a sudden image of Dire or yellow. Oh no, that's yellow. Sorry. Your weakness is yellow diamond. Your fear of losing yellow constantly makes you tense. You can't think of anything but defense. So you've never been able to display your full power. You don't need to be so worried about me. <laughs> so start by fighting however you like. Then we'll talk. All right. Oh man, I love, okay. It's so funny how, I mean, okay, but it's not okay to mentally torture your youngers, but this lesson that they just dropped, um, which is probably very true, even though it's a bit mean to say that yellow is your weakness, but it's true, um, very valuable in terms of um, changing Zircon's mindset and how they approach battle. That's pretty cool. And I'll say, again, <laughs> they are talking about yellow, but I feel like Bort has already been through this mentally in their own head in relation to Dyer, and that that was something that they had to overcome themselves. They're here. That fuss. Wait, I think that's... <laughs> Foss, please, let me take this one. That's an empty black spot. Empty? We see them sometimes. It's an illusion. It will disappear soon enough. Oh, that's... Ah, uh, that's new. Oh, I didn't know. Again, still a lot of things that Foss doesn't know. There's so much I don't know. 
You hold your sword too stiffly. Y yes, but. Oh. Oh. Zircon finally having found a way through to Bort. Or at least, like, just being like, okay, don't be so paranoid about pissing off Bort. And uh, they're actually happy now, which makes Yellow sad. Have they gone to talk to Padba? Yeah. I feel like these two were the best buddy type. Like, given their similarities in age, they would have had each other to lean on. I think I'll tell Sensei to make Bort and Zircon an official team. No. If Zircon is with Bort, everything will be fine. Because unlike me, Bort doesn't keep messing up and losing partners. And tell me it's not the wrong choice. I've been thinking too hard for too long. I'm tired. Mind if I lie down next to you? Oh my god. I don't know exactly how many partners uh, Yellow has lost. I think it's at least four or five. I mean, you're losing one is more than what anyone could handle, so. Again, like... <laughs> At the beginning, character introductions, they say Foss is really damaged. I just feel like they're all damaged in their own different ways. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's so sad too that they can't um, talk to Piper, who is probably the only one who can really understand Yellow and how tiring it is to have to deal with being immortal but also deal with all of the trauma that accumulates over their immortal lifetimes. Chapter 31 Fresh Lex At least Yellow kind of has Alex but Alex is probably just more interested in reading about Lunarians and taking notes and organizing their library so are you busy? A little. I'm airing out some files from the library. Is it urgent? I wanted to redo my studies about the Lunarians. Would you teach me everything you know? <laughs> to someone who loves studying or just scholarship, I mean, being scholarly in general, this question, would you teach me everything you know? Because you just never get it. Most people just don't give a crap about most things. Um, so I can kind of understand <laughs> Lex's um, total over-the-top enthusiasm about someone finally wanting them to share their knowledge. What would you like to know first? Come on, where should I begin? Uh, Lex, we need those. They're original textbook manuscripts. <laughs> Stratigraphic structure. I remember absolutely none of this. Coastal erosion rate. How air pressure affects cloud formation. I'm really digging into the weeds now. I think I'm in trouble. Of everything I've learned, all I can remember is... Oh, a flashback to baby Foss. You've gotten a firm grasp on the language now, so today we will begin your lessons. Oh, they had to, I mean, of course I had to learn how to speak, but it's, yeah, it's just so head trippy that they were once babies who didn't know anything and had their heads pretty much filled with everything that Sensei deemed appropriate to fill them their heads with. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, Shenshei. <laughs> oh, just kill me with the baby false cuteness. Hey, 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 did you see that? Giggle, giggle, so cute. 
That's enough. Sensei, is a new kid gonna fight? I don't know yet, but Phosphophyllite is a kind, gentle gem. They are. Lex, I rounded up all your papers. <laughs> Question one. Tell me the type of Linarian that appeared on the second day of the fifth month, 109 years ago. With his official name. How should I know? A quiz game? I thought it would be more fun this way. <laughs> I just want to learn. <laughs> Foss is just like, oh, just give me what I want. Don't make this weird. <laughs> and Alex is like, no, I'm going to take every opportunity because this never happens to me. Every opportunity to make this the perfect educational experience. Then take these. <laughs> there will be a test at a future date. You're copying Sensei. <laughs> test. The sound of the word fills me with dread. Yeah, relatable. It will be in quiz game format. <laughs> you just want to do a quiz game. Start with Introduction to Linarians, Volume 1. Yeah. I'm assuming that Alex is the one that wrote all of these volumes on the different Linarians, and if that is the case, that is very impressive. What's Yellow doing here? Yellow is a special guest lecturer with a wealth of credentials. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Ah, <laughs> oh, Alex is such a nerd. I love them. You've got to have at least one in every society. Otherwise, what progress would there be, right? Knowledge is power. Question. Wait, what was that at the bottom? Okay, it's just a mountain. Question. Of the five ray old types that have appeared in the past, what model of vessel have we seen the twelfth fewest of? <laughs> These questions are insane. Silent, no. Skew six streamlined star dais model. <laughs> right. Impressive. Same to you, you made it to the unpalatable place where once we total up last month's scores, you may or may not have changed the rankings. <laughs> it all just flows into my head, Lex Sensei. Really, Sensei is pleased. Oh, so Foss has a big brain. Big brain false. There we go. Lex Sensei, do you think it's possible to communicate with Linarians? We know nothing about a Linarian language. In any case, our contact with them is always so brief, we just don't have any information. Something else for Foss to write into their encyclopedia, which I have no idea is still a thing or not. Do you like the Linarians, Lex? What a question. I imagine it would be, I don't know, because of who the Linarians are and how long they've been fighting them for, to ask a question like this would be pretty taboo, I would assume. And the fact that they've lost so many of their fellow gens to them. Yeah. I don't know. No. I do my research to overcome my condition, and for one other reason. Here we go. A little before you were born, they took Chris Beryl from me. I think about the Linarians every day. I mean, at this point, it doesn't take long. Maybe except for Zircon, it doesn't take long for you to suffer a huge loss in the form of like a lost partner and yeah then the PTSD comes and then the whole how do you get through this grief um focus on the one thing that you're good at and direct it towards you know fighting the Linarians yeah it's pretty it's a pretty harsh environment to grow up in To make sure my hatred stays fresh. 
Oh, I was kind of hoping that the chapter title Fresh, you know, pointed to something a little bit more happy. Like fresh memories, I don't know. But yeah. Alex studies Lunarians to make sure that they stay hating them forever. God. Fresh, eh? Mm, oh no, I don't I don't want Foss to sort of learn that as a lesson or as a model to follow in terms of making sure they keep the abduction of Antark so fresh in their heads and the hate. A three ray model old type. Is it empty? No. Here they come. Smiling very serenely. Oh, I forgot my sword. I mean, I guess they're powerful enough even with just their um, alloy. Grrr. Swish. Oh, what is that? Wait. It kind of looks like they just pulled out a... <laughs> like a... Looks like a gem in the shape of a ninja star oh it was the bow and arrow okay so Foss has grabbed one of them by the throat just before they're about to notch an arrow can you Okay, so, oh wow, okay, so, alright, because I didn't really see this clearly in the anime, but it looks like they've um, encircled, I guess, created a sort of bubble with their alloy to keep out all of the other arrows that are flying their way, um, in order to have some sort of privacy to ask them the question. Can you understand what I'm saying? Okay, they look like they're trying to speak. Uh, okay, they're either trying to speak or they're or they're being suffocated and hyperventilating, or both. <sighs> End of chapter 31. Chapter 32, angst. God, okay. Uh, there's real there's fear I guess fear absolute horror in the eyes of the Lunarian yeah so there's some very clear display of emotion there uh, it kind of humanizes them a lot more as opposed to their always serene expressions Sure. Okay, something's... Yep. Attacking. Uh, amethyst? Wait. Oh, wow. I just pulled them to the ground. Oh. Look at how human... Like, just the the form of their body is very pretty much human and they're kind of having a moment like the eye contact and this um attempt at communication oh my goodness just slice just right across the brain I wonder if they feel pain too. I don't know. I mean, because I don't really have um, a physical body as such, at least in the flesh sense, not like the Admirabilis. Oh, I don't know. That's. Are you okay? 
Oh, interestingly, it was Cinnabar, I think, in the anime, who was the one that came to Force's rescue. Hmm. You saved my butt. Good cover, Foss. They were just a bit disappointed that they didn't really get any much further than uh, Twin Crystal Power. It's a great power. Seriously. Ugh. You must be tired to let them overpower you like that. You've been working too hard. We'll go report to Sensei, so you just stay here and rest. Thanks. So, hey... Did either of you hear anything when you sliced up the Lunarian? No, nothing. I guess I'm just tired. Uh, mm. Oh, I guess one of those things where Force is the only one that could could talk to Ventricosis or the Emerabilis, and so I guess this is just an extension of that ability, being able to understand non-gem entities. Ugh, sounds like a, a sound of pain, to be honest. Hmm, I did learn something new, but it sounded like breathing. Could it really be words? Was I the only one who could hear it? Colour appeared in the Lunarian's eyes. Was that a reaction to what I said? Oh, that's right. Hang on. Sorry, let me head back. So I guess pupils appear? Yeah, that's right. Oh, interesting. Is it they either they deliberately hide the their facial expressions, or because Foss was like kind of choking them, and they kind of just couldn't maintain the fa the facade anymore. Hmm. I don't know anything for sure. For some reason, I thought if I could just meet with one, that would solve everything. But I've got a long road ahead of me. Sigh. And it's exhausting sneaking around all the time. Ah. Mm. Yep. Psst. Oh, ghost quartz. Oh, nice. Clatter. <laughs> Ghost, are you that startled? They kind of remind me of Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. <laughs> Just appears at the most random of moments and is very flighty. Since all but Lapis Lazuli's head went to the moon, it's my job to manage the library in my partner's absence. Oh my goodness, another one who had their partner taken. Did you forget that? Yes, looking for something. I was wondering how the Lunarians communicate with each other. I thought there might be some records. Lex took off with everything we have about the Lunarians. Figures. <laughs> uh, okay, so they obviously they have a library full of books and volumes on other topics other than Lunarians. And Alex is just all the Lunarians, that's her thing that's her area oh but when i was airing out some textbooks i did find an old war diary would you like to see it absolutely oh war diary i love that we get this little side trip into the library and we get to meet ghost courts leave me alone huh <laughs> Are they play fighting? <laughs> oh, I feel like Bored is actually enjoying themselves. Oh. Now is not the time for this. Yes, it is. This is important. <laughs> the diamonds are lipophilic. Attracts all in Greece. Your hair gets dirty quite easily, so I recommend a proper brushing regimen. Yellow, do you something about this? <laughs> Whoa, go Zerk on them. Like, from going... Uh, going from being absolutely scared shitless <laughs> about having to even speak to Bort 
to chasing them with a brush and demanding that they implement a proper hair care regimen. <laughs> oh man, that's some progress. You called Steven shiny? <laughs> Damn you monocrystals. I'm not like you gems. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> I love that the other diamonds are just ganging up on <laughs> Bort. Because come on, Bort, if you're going to dish it out, you got to be able to receive it as well, right? And they do look good, the other diamonds, so you got to, you know, get with the program. I wish you'd always fight this aggressively, Zircon. I will, not now. <laughs> Go, you can do it. I love that they're all just, they've all kind of made peace with their different roles and different partners and this partner switching that's been going on. That's kind of nice. Foss, that momentary moment of joy, and then just back to sad Foss. Is... What I'm seeing now, the, oh, she's, they've gone to see Sensei. Is what I'm seeing now the real Sensei, or... <sighs> you never can tell, can you? Wait, did he read her mind? No. Oh no, this is Ghost Quartz. Oh, so they were just thinking about Sensei. That is just awful, I mean... Whenever, you know, because we all kind of grow up uh, with um, authority figures or figures that we look up to when we're little and they just, as soon as you find out something that completely shatters your image of their kindness or their goodness or their infallibility, it's, it's a pretty tough U-turn to have to make. There's this ghost quartz. I mean, I never expected to see you here, Foss. When you were working on your natural history, you never came anywhere near the library. <laughs> working on it? That's true. Sensei! Huh. Black spots. Three at once. Three? One in the northeast, one due east, and one south by southwest. Wow. Thank you. I'll handle this. They're all spread. Like, I guess, attacking from different vantage points? Obviously, this has not happened before. So they're becoming more aggressive. Lure the ones in the northeast and south-southeast closer to the one in the east. I'll expel them all together. Lure them. Dire yellow Benito. Go northeast. Board and Zircon, south-southeast. Neptune, you ring the bell. Foss is about to step up into action, and Sensei goes, get some rest. No. I'm going with you. <gasps> I mean, I'm just a little bit shocked that Foss would straight up go, no. And Sensei just kind of takes it. Come on, then. <sighs> She's thinking about Padpa's words. Tread carefully. And also, um, you know, ironically, uh, Foss has still kept themselves in the winter uniform and um, the shape of their heel is reminiscent of what Antark used to wear. And find the truth for myself. Oh, so just carrying out this surveillance program on Sensei. Sensei for sure knows that something is up with Foss and because Foss did say specifically I kind of want to find out more about the Lunarians and he didn't oddly enough he didn't really shut that down at least not um out loud <sighs> I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen ugh man things are really <laughs> they're getting it's sort of at a really critical point right now. All right, I, I really enjoyed those chapters. We definitely got some new things 
that wasn't able to be shown in the anime. Um, starting off with Padpa's chapter, though, it felt really short, and it was short, but I loved how many emotional touch points that were in the few conversations that we did get. So first off, seeing a completely different side of Rutil, the one that's not snarky and I guess a bit cold and, you know, a dark sense of humour, but instead is so obviously emotionally invested in their partner and who actually hides this incredible amount of self-doubt due to their failure to fix Padpa, um was really touching and really rounded out Rutil's character. Uh, and in return, Padpa's sensitivity with how they handle Rutil's complete obsession with finding the right materials in order to revive them. Um, and the fact that a single revival might last for just a couple of minutes and the next one might not come for another couple hundred years that sort of commitment or persistence or i mean if you want to look at it in a negative light um a kind of unhinged obsession um is unfathomable to most humans i would imagine especially you know given our limited lifespan um so padpa just wants retail to give up basically but they're very aware that saying something like that to retail would possibly break them in that that has been their sole purpose or their main purpose for so long they might not be able to handle that so seeing the nature of their partnership and the love that they have for each other uh, which is very different to the partnerships that the other gems have i think they all individually i mean as pairs have very different vibes um yeah there's a lot of emotional baggage to unpack there then there was Padba's coaching of Foss on how to approach this prickly issue of how do you deal with a possible betrayal by a beloved, respected and trusted figure, i.e. sensei, especially when no one else seems to have a problem with um, letting the suspiciousness slide. And Padba interestingly relates it back to how they deal with Rutil's obsession. Um, so the way that you go about discovering or telling or uncovering the truth is basically a minefield that you have to navigate, navigate really carefully because you can never tell for sure how people will react to the truth or what consequences will flow from exposing it. And Foss has clearly taken that advice to heart because, you know, they're sneaking around the place, discreetly going to the library to learn more about Lenarians and hiding the fact that she's suspicious of Sensei from, um, from Rutil and, you know, covering up, you know, when Amethyst comes in to save them, they just hide again the fact that they're trying to get answers from the Lenarians. All in all, just a stress-filled exercise in caution. So when Foss does manage to get their hands on a Lunarian, it sounds as though they're trying to speak and their eyes fill in, making them much more human-like than before. So I'm really curious to see how much more Foss will uncover about the Lunarians and how that will position them in relation to the other gems who would probably look on in horror at even the thought of reaching out to communicate with the Lunarians. Because then that would challenge the entire worldview and system that Sensei has built around the Lunarians. That they're all bad, all they want is to murder and abduct you and make you into jewellery. Which is probably mostly true, but also likely leaves out certain key truths that round out the picture of what's really going on. So this whole humanizing of your enemy is a really interesting angle that i'm keen to read more about um yeah so that is it for this reaction uh i look forward to seeing what you guys thought about these couple of chapters and until next time uh do take care of yourselves and i will see you guys all real soon